Hey everyone, welcome back to another biogas video. Today you can see that we've pulled out the whiteboards back to school. So what I'm going to try and do is do a biogas basics. So for this video, we're going to cover what is a biodigester, how does it work, like the processes involved in the breakdown of material, and basic design principles. So that's looking at like the IBC designs that I've got here, where I started out 44 gallons, but just the basics of what is actually needed. You can even do it in a milk jug if you want. It's not practical, but you can still do it. So let's talk about what is a biodigester. So biodigester is basically a vessel where we can have anaerobic digestion occur within it. So what we're trying to mimic is like an animal's stomach. So we get the bacteria that we need from the feces of the animal, or we can do enzymes. But the basic principle of that is we just need something that is airtight and that just eliminates all the oxygen and can just get that fermentation process going. So that's just the bacteria. Now there's, I'm gonna cover this in how's it work, different temperature ranges, different steps. There's four different steps with different bacterias and uh, yeah, a lot of maintenance going on in between. So I'll rub this off and we'll start doing a diagram of how it works. First, with how a digester works, we'll go through the absolute basics. So, say that we've already got an active digester. I'll make another video, this will be my next video of how to actually start a digester. So, say that we've already started with an active digester. We feed it food, food scraps, anything organic. So, typically I use anything that I can find, bar bones and seeds. Because I use a sink grinder to mix all my food up, get more surface area, and it digests easily. Think of when you're eating. You get your food, you chew it up, and it makes it easy to digest. Otherwise you get indigestion. The same thing can happen with the biogas. So, we can either feed it food or manure. And that's called co-digestion. So I think this is a great idea too. So you can feed your digester food and it feeds the bacteria. But if you feed it manure as well, you're actually keeping that colony up. So once we've fed it there, it digests. There's four stages in that. That's what I'm going to talk about next. And then the byproduct of that is your gas, your liquid fertilizer, and your solids. So let's talk about the phases. Okay, so the four stages of the biodigestion process. So first step is hydrolysis. So when we put our food in, it is long chain fats, oils, carbohydrates, uh, other polymers. So the process of this is we use hydrolytic bacteria to break it down into shorter chain, say like sugars and other monomers. So that gets the process started. Now the next step in anaerobic digestion is acinogenesis. So what we do now is we take those shorter chain sugars and monomers and we convert those to alcohols and volatile fatty acids. So that gets broken down, we go to the third step, acetogenesis. Now this is, uh, you'd probably be like familiar with uh, acetic acid, it's vinegar. So we break it down even further to that, and that produces acetates. And then we use the methanogen bacteria to make methanogenesis process. Now this is what the, would be the final step. So this produces our, sorry you can't see it down here, the light, but the methane, CO2, and other trace gases like hydrogen sulfide. We need to scrub those out. But very basic, that is the four processes. There, as I said, there is different bacteria for each step. And if you're really that enthused about it, you can look it up in the, like the scientific papers and stuff. It is, it's, it's, it's interesting to read. All right, but let's go to the next step. Okay, let's talk about temperature and retention times. So once we feed the food into the digester, it needs to be at a certain temperature for bacteria to work, and it needs to be in the digester long enough for it to break down. So we've got three areas of temperature range here. So we've got thermophilic, which is 50 to 60 Celsius, 122 F to 140 Fahrenheit. Mesophilic, 30 to 83, is 86 to 100. Uh, and psychrophilic, is 15 to 25 degrees 
Celsius with 59 to 77 Fahrenheit. Now, typically this will depend on how large your operation is, or whether you're at home or where you live. If you say, if you live in the tropics, you're gonna hit the mesophilic range pretty easily because the ambient temperature is going to be pretty hospitable for you and your digester. Uh, so where I am, it snows and it gets quite cold in winter. So that we're in a temperate region. So we're in the psychophilic and for me to actually boost the activity of the bacteria, I have to use heaters in there and that's just simple aquarium heaters. Um, so the retention time, ideally the longer the, the retention time, so that's the amount of time say you feed until it goes out. So the longer you can have the food in there or the manure, the more you're going to starve the pathogens that could be in there of oxygen. So you'll have more friendlier uh, liquids and solids coming out. So in the thermophilic, because it's so warm, the bacteria is so active, you can feed it more often, more often, and larger amounts, because it will just eat it. Five to 12 days, which is a good turnaround. So I'd say commercial wise, the thermophilic would be the way to go. But they have stirrers, uh, temperature gauges, pressure gauges, everything set up. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, commercial setups for biodigesters, but they're quite intense. Um, and we're just talking base, basics uh, for like domestic. Uh, mesophilic, 10 to 30 days, that seems about right. I've always been told about 28, so that seems a good range. Obviously, 30 would be more towards a 10. But psychophilic is what I'm operating at and mine bubbles away quite slowly. Um, I'm trying not to use so much power. I'd like to be a little bit more self-sustainable. I've used I've got the solar, pretty much running all the power with the battery backup. But yeah, 40 days. And I think that's, that's good, especially if you're going to be using things like uh, other animal waste, like dog droppings or maybe your own, which is possible. But anything that has meat in it is probably carrying uh, pathogens. So that's the temperature ranges and the retention times. Something to consider with your setup. All right, now let's look at basic principles of design. Basic design principles. So anything that you make out of anything, it's gotta have food in pipe, liquid out, gas out. That's three, three must-haves. You could make it out of, I said, an IBC, which I'll do up a design here. Uh, milk jug, 44 gallon, a hole in the ground. So probably a lot of you have seen home biogas. It's a, a bladder. You can do that. Um, geez, a, a watertight brick thing. Doesn't matter. As long as it's got those three things, we're in good shape. Let me just draw up a few here. Now, here is a very crude IBC design. As I said, basic, basic. So, looking down, you can see we've got one hole here, one hole there, and a gas outlet. So the idea is you can have like a mouthpiece, put food in here, goes down the tube, food goes blah, 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 digests, and then eventually out this pipe and into a bucket. So in, uh, I think it's the Solar City's design, They've got it so the water goes all the way up to the top. Uh, so let's just say the water level up here. Now the problem with that I've found, which I've made up another video on, my new improved IBC design, follows improvements from this design. So food goes in here, goes in there, and you can have this down a little bit. Food comes up after being digested. Now this level here, where the water comes out, it's going to be in, the food is up here as well, and in this gas pipe, there's going to be all that liquid. So this gets blockages. If you can see what I'm doing, so I'll give this a quick rub out, and I'll walk through my design. Now this is a design that I came up with. I hope it's not too uh, hard to read. I'll walk you through it here. So this is a little bit difficult, but. Here, 
you can see I've got my outlet and it's dropped down. So this is all gas. So my outlet up here does not get blocked. The hoses are just free. And I've got an access pipe here that I can put a stirrer in. So when I notice that it either slows down or you know, it doesn't look like it's producing and I get a build up, I can turn my stick and stir the bottom of it. And the feed in pipe here, so this is actually on the outside, means I can feed it directly down through here. Um, because if I had it up here, you know, you're tipping, tipping buckets of food up, whereas I can just tip it down here. Makes it a lot easier. So food comes down here, gets stirred up, and then eventually this all digests and comes out here. And this is a heater. I know you can't really see it too much, it's small, but it's just access pipe. So this actually, because if I don't have this going on down, sorry, this bit of pipe actually drops down below the water level. So otherwise gas would just out the top. Anyway, I'll put a link to that video of my design. Um, I think it's good, not because I made it, but just because I haven't had any blockages. Uh, it's easy access, easy to feed. Uh, all my hoses are quite good. I've got two big IBCs joined together, going through the same scrubbers into the bag up here but now I'll just do it a little bit simpler for you simple 44 drum or even smaller or bigger whatever you've got laying around pretty sure a lot of people have seen this design this works off the same principle as the water level is going to be smashed to the top so you're going to have no matter where where this outlet is you got to trace that along and that's where your water level is going to be and this is like inside the gas line here and I don't like it so my first one if you care to go back through videos was a blue barrel and I did this and I realized this problem so I ended up actually making that just an access hole so I got rid of got rid of that got rid of that pipe out of the, oh actually it was pipes under the water level but I made an outlet here, so it actually went like this. So water came through there. So that means my water level now dropped to there, and gas was free to go up without any blockages. So some very basic stuff. Uh, as I said, look, biogas can be as hard or as easy you want to make it. If you want to know all about the bacteria and all that, but this is just very broad look at how to get started, uh, what it is, the stages involved. Um, but I, want, I really want to actually get into looking at commercial size. Uh, it really interests me because uh, then you can actually produce large amounts of gas and then you can use uh, heat and power generators, feed it back into the grid. Um, you can feed the gas itself back into the, uh, into the lines. But uh, yeah, that's all right. So look, I think I'll leave it at that one. And next video is how to actually start a digest from start to finish. <laughs>